Yeah, this is going to be a video where <coughs> we're talking about three principles. There's the one about correlation and covariance, uh, casualty, and then uh, averaging of uh, noise. Uh, we're going to use Excel to demonstrate this. So if we start with uh, first, we do the correlation stuff. Uh, here are some sketches. Uh, uh, we have two signals y and c of t which is a constant times the sinusoid uh, here are the formula for correlation between uh, x and y uh, and uh, on top here is the covariance and on the bottom here is is the uh, the standard deviation then uh, for each of the signals uh, and this is uh, using a summation so we have to divide by the number we sum, we sum to the signals they are generated here, uh, the y of t and the uh, c of t signals, and uh, we have a time vector which starts at zero, and then we have a delta t that we add on down here. So that's added down here, uh, and we have uh, uh, 242 uh, values here. So you're just counting up the number of values that we have. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, okay. Here's the the sinusoid for for the c of t, and uh, the other one here is the y of t. Uh, so what we do here now is to calculate the delta covariance between uh, these signals. The b4 here is the number minus one uh, that we have to calculate. So it's the signal here. Uh, minus uh, the the average, which is in the formula the the x with a dash or no x with a dash x y and a, with dash over is is mean, um, uh, and it's it's the same for the y and the c uh, signal, which is uh, so if you see the c is uh, this one we looked at, and the y is this one uh, uses this one. Uh, now uh, and we just drag down those down here. and the covariance as we started with is uh, uh, the signal minus the average times the other signal minus the average of the other signals divided by the number minus one. So that's the covar uh, covar uh, covariance. Um, and uh, this one is also just dragged down. So we have the covariance for all and then we sum up the co, co uh, uh, variances and we get point uh, 4651 and this just uh, transported up here uh, and uh, then it's uh, divided by uh, the uh, the uh, standard deviations here and here it's just used uh, standard deviation p and the p and the s standard deviation is if you subtract a uh, one from the number and stuff and uh, i'll check that uh, to match up uh, uh, it's it's accurate enough um, uh, yeah okay uh, and then the uh, yeah that was the uh, the um, correlation here the correlation between uh, y and c and how you often use uh, a row uh, but I used uh, r and here is what Excel calculates as a correlation of, uh, of these two signals so now uh, we have a correlation of minus one and correlation or covariance and correlation just is uh, an indication uh, how the signals varies together. So if the first signal is increasing and the other one is decreasing all the time and when this one is decreasing the other one is increasing uh, you have a correlation of minus one. Uh, of course now if you make this signal uh, equal we can say also th let's say 360 here for the face, uh, then they are completely equal and uh, we get a correlation of about one uh, because they increase uh, together. If the first signal increases, the other one uh, increases. And uh, uh, now when we have the A uh, uh, equal to zero, of course we could simplify the formula because uh, the mean here is zero for all of these. Uh, so basically we could uh, probably just sum up uh, the uh, products divide by the n and then multiply by 2 or divide by 0.5 uh, we get the same result but here if uh, if these signals are moving apart let's see if this one uh, 
has an offset of 10. There's no change in the correlation value because we just subtract the, uh, the average values here. So that's correlation. Uh, now these signals are equal, but if we say they have just to move back to the same offset, uh, if we change the frequency, for instance, for this one, 0.2, uh, the correlation changes. Because uh, now, of course, we have a, 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 a decrease here while the signal is increasing, which means that the correlation uh, factor is going down or the covariance is also going down. And you can see here which is the product. That's this uh, column here, uh, which is the uh, is basis for the sum up here. Uh, here it's possible to play with, uh, uh, with this uh, system point. Uh, three was it yes uh, and uh, now also we can change uh, the uh, the delta time here for instance to one second of course then we get more of these and uh, the correlation doesn't change uh, uh, the correlation factor covariance changes if I do this 45 they are not uh, that equal you see this one changes so, so this covariance it has if one signal increases the other one increases uh, and we can go back to uh, in uh, opposite phase 180 uh, of course there's minus one and then you could we could just play around with these angles now if we uh, want to look at this causality that one change causes another one uh, what I've done uh, or if we look at uh, the definition here just out of Wikipedia can read this uh, causation uh, uh, one uh, change causes another change uh, this can be demonstrated if we move to uh, to the other flip here in the Excel uh, it's it's basically the same but now we make this one dependent on that one so if I change this one this one changes uh, or is equal of course, we could just change that with an uh, with a percentage, but now this is causality. If 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 I change one, we could change the frequency here, point or one or whatever we had, uh, just to have an equal. So if I change this one, point, uh, point four, for instance, they both change. There's no change here, which means that okay, a change in my first signal caused a change in the other signal. But as opposed to when we did a correlation uh, flip here, uh, a change, they just changed independently. So there's no uh, causation. One is not causing the other one, but still they can correlate. But it doesn't mean that if one changes, the other one changes. But the correlation can be perfect or plus one, uh, a zero with no correlation and, uh, and uh, minus one with full uh, correlation. Uh, okay, uh, the other part of this one is to uh, has to do about the averaging of noise and try uh, try to recover signals. Yeah, so now we have moved to another screen just to try to demonstrate uh, this uh, averaging of noise. So what we are looking at here is uh, basically the same sinusoid as from the the previous plot that we have. Uh, we have the delta t and the time vector here. We could uh, could also change the offset here, but the thing is here we have a, a frequency. We have uh, uh, eight noisy signals here, and uh, then we have a plot down here. We have the original signal and the one that is averaged out. Uh, to produce the noise uh, is uh, fairly simple. What we do is that we have a random number which is between zero and one. We subtract uh, 0 0.5. Uh, just to have it equal amount of uh, each side of the original signal and then we also have a gain here and uh, what we need is we have uh, uh, equal gain for all of this because it's random we try to emulate white noise which is the same strength uh, for all frequency and uh, completely random and it looks uh, not too bad over here when you look at all this signal the original signal is not in here it's just the um, the um, noisy signals that's plotted here uh, time on the primary axis and then the amplitude on on uh, the secondary axis uh, all these they are just equal if you look at the formulas over here they are the same um, 
so it's uh, it's that single and then, and then a random number. If I if I push save here, uh, Excel is going to generate new random numbers, but I've tried not to do it. This one is just a, a count from here to there. Uh, I could have written eight because I could probably ca count those. And then this is the average of the sum of all these divided by eight, and also. Uh, the A to the K5 is a fixed reference. Uh, so if I uh, drag down here, uh, or if I drag all these down, we have 200, and I think it's 242 as we have in the other one, uh, uh, we will uh, we'll just sum up all the columns over here, and then we get this signal. And uh, this is uh, recovering uh, the signal, trying to recover the signal. So um, uh, we're not going to change the face and, and stuff and, and offset it. It's not necessary because it, it is an average. Uh, and here is a noisy signal. And here we have plotted the original signal in the background, the blue one, scroll down. And then the average signal, uh, signal here, which is the orange one on top. And they are compared to this, these noisy signals. We have recovered the signal pretty well here. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, is uh, is basically what it is, and you can use this also uh, when when you have random uh, variation in measurements. Take a lot of measurements, do the average of the measurements, and uh, it 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 will recover uh, the original measurement out of this. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, seen the. Uh, we have, uh, have, have have three or, 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 or four principles, <laughs> that is, we looked at uh, covariance, correlation, uh, and uh, and then also the causality, or what they call a causation in uh, Wikipedia. Uh, one uh, one change is causing a change in something, you, other, other things that you're looking at. We looked at just, just uh, two sinus, uh, sinusoids that changed the frequency. Uh, uh, mm, at the same time, uh, the first we looked at, if we, if we change one frequency, the other frequency doesn't change. This is just as an uh, illustration. And the last one here was averaging of noise. We tried to emulate white noise and, and add it to uh, to, a, to a sinusoid, and then we used the same sinusoid and add a random noise and created eight new signals. We took the average of those eight signals. And then we plot the original signals with the average of the noisy signals, the eight noisy signals, and we pretty much had recovered uh, the uh, original signal. Uh, there were some bumps on it, so if we had uh, had more uh, noisy signals with random noise on it, we would probably be more spot on uh, to recover the original signals. So uh, that was uh, the demonstration. <laughs>